This video comes out one day after Halloween and I felt what better way to celebrate that occasion than talking about Reaper, even if it's not the grim one. And I've also not talked about the Fiedler Audio Dolby Atmos Composer for a while, so here we go. Uh, a relatively unknown little trick about how to use the Fiedler Audio Dolby Atmos Composer in Reaper that will significantly speed up your Dolby Atmos workflow in Reaper. So let's go. Now before I get started, I need to briefly talk about what software we're going to use today. In addition to Reaper, we're going to work with the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiedler Audio. If you're not aware about the Dolby Atmos Composer, that is a plugin that allows you to produce Dolby Atmos in pretty much any digital audio workstation, including Reaper. And uh, it is actually a very, very convenient way of working with Dolby Atmos. I did a number of videos about the Dolby Atmos Composer. I'm going to leave some links in the description below. In addition to the Dolby Atmos Composer, I'm also going to use Spacelab, which is a reverb, also from Fiddler Audio, that integrates completely into the Dolby Atmos Composer and allows us to send the reverb into the uh, bad channels of a Dolby Atmos project while maintaining the objects in the object tracks of that Dolby Atmos project. Now, I'm going to work with Spacelab Interstellar today, but uh, everything that I'm going to do, you can also do with Spacelab Ignition. You just don't have uh, as many channels as I'm going to use today. As a quick disclaimer, Fiedler Audio provided me with a free license to the Adobe Atmos Composer. However, I purchased Spacelab Interstellar myself. This is not a sponsored video by any means. Nobody had any influence on what I'm going to say. Fiedler Audio doesn't even know that I'm making this video and neither does the Green Reaper. So let's hop into Reaper. Now, for those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you are familiar with the tracks that I'm going to use today. Those are the same tracks that I also used in my series about game audio. So let's have a brief listen. So it's essentially three tracks. There's a synth track and a bass track, and then there are some keys coming in. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into Dolby Atmos uh, and we're going to do that by uh, using the Dolby Atmos Composer. Now, in order to use the Dolby Atmos Composer, a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, we need to add the Dolby Atmos Composer to the master track. So let's do that. Let's all add the Composer. Here we have the Dolby Atmos Composer. I'm using the VST3 version. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the Dolby Atmos Composer. For those of you who are familiar with Dolby Atmos, uh, this is essentially a basic Dolby Atmos setup with 128 channels. The first 10 channels are the bad channels, and then we have 118 objects. And the Dolby Atmos Composer essentially allows us to work with Dolby Atmos in a very convenient way. All we really need to do is we need to add a beam plugin that beams the audio from the individual tracks into the Dolby Atmos Composer to our to our tracks. So let's do that for the first track here. So I'm going to use uh, the synth here and I'm going to beam that. Let's put a Dolby Atmos beam plugin here. Let's add that. Now, as soon as I do that, I see in the Dolby Atmos Composer track that uh, this beam is now connected here. If, I, if I'm not doing anything, it's going to be routed into the bad channels, but I can obviously also change that to objects. Uh, and that will then essentially route that into the first available object channels. So let's have a brief listen on what we have here. And I might actually kind of um, mute the other two tracks for a second. So let's just play that. So as you can see, the audio is coming in through the Beam plugin into the Dolby Atmos Composer. Now, so far, so good. There's one issue that a lot of people have pointed out, and that is uh, because of the way the Dolby Atmos Composer works. Or well, to be perfectly honest, the way uh, Dolby Atmos works in general. What I have right now is that the uh, audio is routed directly from the track into the Dolby Atmos Composer through the Beam plugin. And that essentially means that uh, the track never really reaches the fader. So if I'm playing the audio now, and I change the fader here, I actually have no effect on the on the outgoing audio, and that is simply because the audio never reaches the fader. It is directly routed into the Dolby Atmos Composer. Now, in some digital audio workstations, you have things that they call post-fader inserts, where you can actually put the beam plugin 
post fader so that you can control the gain with the fader and then it is essentially routed into the Dolby Atmos composer. However, Reaper doesn't have that. Now the way you usually work around that issue is by not sending the audio directly from the track into the Dolby Atmos composer through the beam plugin, but instead using an additional bus and sending the audio from the track to the bus and then from the bus into the Dolby Atmos composer. And that way you can use the fader of the original track in order to control the gain of the track. So let's just do that. Um, so first things first, I'm going to f remove the beam plugin from the original track and then I'm going to add an additional track that is going to hold the beam plugin. Let's call that track beam and uh, let's maybe move that down. And then I'm going to change the routing. So I'm going to route the original audio track into that beam track. And I'm going to make sure that I'm also not sending it to the master. I only want to send it into the beam track. And in the beam track, I'm going to take the um, Dolby Atmos beam plugin, I'm going to put that on the track. And that essentially now ensures that the audio is not going from the original track into the Dolby Atmos composer directly, but instead is first routed into the beam track and from the beam track then into the Dolby Atmos composer track. And that will allow me to use the fader of the original track. So let's just see if that actually works. So if I'm now changing the fader here. I essentially can control the gain of that individual track. Now, the problem with that is that uh, if you do that for a lot of tracks, you are and adding up a lot of individual beam buses, and that can be l very unwieldy. And I'm going to show you a trick where you can do that actually with just one bus, uh, and that is actually fairly ingenious. And we're going to do that with Space Lab, uh, which is the is, which is the, uh, the the reverb that uh, goes together with the Dolby Atmos Composer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a track that can hold the Space Lab uh, reverb. So let's just do that, uh, and we're going to insert a new track again, and uh, let's call the track uh, space lab so this is sort of uh, our reverb track let's move that down maybe and we're going to add an instance of space lab i'm going to use space lab interstellar you could also use space lab ignition that is fine the only difference is that in interstellar you're going to have more objects available so we're going to add that and uh, then I'm going to do instead of routing the uh, audio through the beam plugin into the Dolby Atmos Compose, I'm going to route it from the beam plugin into Spacelab. And the way I, I'm going to do that is by exchanging the, oopsie, where are we? this is wrong. Let me just close that again. Uh, instead of uh, kind of sending that uh, from the beam plugin into the Dolby Atmos, I'm actually going to use the Spacelab beam plugin instead. So let's just op open it up and I'm going to replace the Dolby Atmos Beam plugin and I'm going to add instead the Spacelab Beam plugin. And uh, that will essentially ensure that the audio is sent from the from the track into Spacelab and then from Spacelab into the Dolby Atmos Composer. So if we now open up the Dolby Atmos Composer, we essentially see that we have the Beam, uh, the, sorry, the Spacelab plugin uh, recognized. The only thing that we need to do in that particular setup is we need to go into Spacelab and we need to uh, make sure that Spacelab recognizes the Beam plugin, the Spacelab Beam plugin, because that is not done automatically. So we need to, need to go into the setups here, source setup, and we need to select the input source, which is the Beam here. And uh, that uh, should now work. So if I now play the audio, oops, that's a little loud. So let me just kind of reduce this a little. So it's now coming in into Spacelab and it's sent from Spacelab into the Dolby Atmos Composer. Now currently uh, it's sending both the uh, original track as well as the reverb into the Dolby Atmos bed. So what I can do is I can uh, click on this object button that will essentially separate the uh, objects from the reverb. So now I have the objects coming in on 11 and 12 and the reverb coming in and, and, at uh, 1 and 2. And I can, for example, switch the reverb to become a 7.1.2 reverb, which would be a typical bad reverb. And as uh, if you've watched my videos about Dolby Atmos Composer and Spacelab, you know that uh, the Dolby Atmos Composer, or Spacelab in particular, has this nice feature that you can actually use uh, reverbs that go beyond the traditional bad layout. So you can actually, for example, even go as far as 
Oopsie, I didn't want to do that. So I even even go as far as uh, a full sphere, a 32 channel bed. Uh, what that essentially will do is it will um, kind of use a speaker layout that, that kind of represents a sphere and you have a fully immersive uh, reverb. Now we can change the reverb obviously and uh, we can change the wet uh, dry gain. So for example, we can have more wet signal, more dry signal, things like that. And we can also change the type of reverb and so forth. Now, uh, at the moment, you might wonder, well, Michael, um, you didn't actually make anything any, in any way, shape or form easier because all, the really, all you really did is you added an additional track. And now I essentially have to do the same thing again. However, this is not entirely the case because uh, as it turns out, the Beam plugin that comes with Spacelab can actually be multi-channel and it can actually have quite a few channels. So what we're going to do when we are adding the additional two tracks, we are not going to add an additional Beam track. We we are actually going to route that into the beam track and for that purpose let me first change the channel layout of the beam track into a we have three tracks so we see essentially need six channels so i'm going to change that to six channels as soon as i do that and I, if i now open up space lab so let me just open up space lab again oopsie you essentially see that uh, it is coming in at six, six channels if i if i now go to the panel I now have six uh, speakers that I can pan around. And these are the six channels that are coming in. One and two were the original two channels. Uh, three and four were the channels from the second track. And uh, five and six are going to be the one from the third track. So all I really need to do is I need to route these additional tracks into the additional channels that I have on that beam track. And, uh, and that's actually fairly easy to do in Reaper. So let me just first of all unmute those and let's change the routing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new send here. We're going to send that into beam. And in beam, we're going to send that not into the first two. We're going to send that into channels two and three. Sorry, not two and three. We're actually going to send that into three and four. We don't want to have one duplicated. And we also want to make sure that the master channel is not sent. So let's uh, disable that. And then we're going to do the same thing for the third one. So let's set the routing and we're going to send that into beam and we're going to send that into channels five and six. And that will now essentially allow me to send uh, the three tracks into one instance of Spacelab Beam, which has six channels. These six channels are then routed into Spacelab. In Spacelab, they are separated into the reverb and to, into the objects and forwarded into the Dolby Atmos Composer. Let's, so let's see what we have here. Oopsie, that was loud. So let's open up uh, Interstellar. So now I have these uh, objects. I can also automate them if, the, if I want to, so, and I can pan them independently. If I now go into the Adobe Atmos Composer. This came in a little hot here. I see essentially the six objects coming in. I have the reverb as a 32 channel bed. And that essentially allows me now to control everything with just one beam. So the way this would work now is that I can change the gain with the regular faders. And uh, the panning would be done through the space lab. Uh, Sorry, not through the Spacelab beam, but through Spacelab itself. So the panning would be done through Spacelab. And I can do the panning here. So for example, I want to kind of move them up here. And use the 3D view. Kind of move that around. That's a little difficult to see, but anyway. And that essentially allows you to use just one instance of the beam plugin to beam all the channels in one go into the uh, into Spacelab, and that essentially means that I really only have added two channels. One was the channel that holds the beam plugin, and one was the channel that holds the Spacelab reverb. And the Spacelab reverb has this nice feature that it allows you to use multi-channel reverb. So in our particular case, we chose the maximal option of 32 channels. And uh, that works just fine. Now you might wonder how far can I go? And the thing is, and that is actually uh, really interesting, is that it can actually go quite far. Uh, so if we, for example, change the uh, beam plugin or the beam track here, so if we go to the routing section here, 
And we changed that from six tracks to 64. What I'm going to see is I'm going to suddenly see 64 objects. So I can route up to 60. If, if, I, if I choose more than 64, it's actually going to stay with 64. So, so 64 is the maximum number. So I can route a maximum number of 64 objects through one instance of uh, Spacelab Beam. And I don't need to worry about additional buses and everything works just exactly as it should. And in this particular setup, I now have Adobe Atmos project with 64 projects uh, and uh, a 32 channel reverb bed. And uh, all I'm going to use is uh, one track that holds the Beam plugin and one track that holds the reverb plugin. And that's pretty much it. Now, this is a really neat trick. I honestly didn't know that myself. This is something that um, sort of Thomas Fiedler himself pointed out to me. We had a discussion recently where he showed me a couple of things that he's working on. Very interesting thing, by the way. And uh, he pointed out that this is possible and I didn't know that. And I, I'm not quite sure if a lot of people are actually aware of that little trick. It makes working with the Adobe Atmos Composer system in Reaper incredibly easy and incredibly simple and incredibly effective. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching my videos. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. In that link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.